What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo from Pitchfork Academy here, and I am very, very excited to announce that I am starting a new tutorial series on how to create a lobby system for use with the Advanced Steam Sessions plugin. So this is a full lobby system like you might see in the finals or Fortnite or Apex Legends and it will have a lot of similar functionality. You will be able to pull up a list of your Steam friends and invite them to the match, select different characters, and even select your weapon loadout before you start a game. We're going to ease into it today with a very easy one. We are just going to add the Advanced Steam Sessions plugin to our project so that we can integrate the Steam Online subsystem with our project. So without further ado, guys, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty, guys, now just before we create our project and integrate Steam into our project, uh, you will need an IDE such as Microsoft Visual Studio 2022 or any other IDE, but I do recommend Visual Studio 2022. So you want to go here and download the Community Edition, which is the free edition of Visual Studio. And if you need help with setting this up, we have a tutorial on this channel by Detri, which I will link in a card up the top right, right now. Now we won't actually be doing any C++ in this project, but Steam Advanced Sessions does not work in Blueprints only projects at this time. So we do have to make our project a C++ project, which will require you to have uh, an IDE installed. Uh, once that's installed, there are a couple of other things you want to make sure you have installed if you haven't already. Uh, one is the .NET from Microsoft. So go here and download the latest version of the .NET SDK. You also want the .NET framework. So go here and download the most recent .NET Framework, and you also want to download DirectX and make sure that that is downloaded and installed. And the last thing we want to download is the actual uh, Steam Advanced Sessions plugin, which you can get from here. So select your engine version and download the Steam Advanced Sessions. It will come in a zip. So I'm going to download this zip. And now we can get to either creating our project or, uh, you know, integrating Steam advanced sessions into your current project. So I'm going to fire up the engine. Now, as I said, guys, this project will need to be a C++ project. So if you are starting from scratch, you are more than welcome to select C++. But just in case you're working with a project that you've already created uh, that is Blueprints only, I'm going to show you how to convert a Blueprints only project uh, to a C++ project. So I'm going to create this as a Blueprints only project just to show you how to do that. And now that we're in the engine, all we need to do to convert this to a C++ project is go to Tools and New C++ Class. And I'm just going to uh, create any kind of C++ class. It really doesn't matter. You can just leave it called My Class and hit Create Class. And as you're warned here, once this is done, you will need to close the editor and rebuild uh, the project. So just click OK and No and we will close the editor. And just navigate to your project's uh, project files folder and try to open your U project file right here. And you'll get this warning saying that you need to uh, rebuild the project. So you can just click yes. And it won't really give you any indication that anything is happening right now. Uh, it will create a few C++ folders potentially. And if you just wait patiently, eventually your project will fire up. So there it is saying starting build. Uh, but then I do think this will disappear and it will not really give you any indication that it's doing something in the background sometimes. So if you just wait, eventually your project will fire back up. And now that this is fired back up, we actually want to close it once more because we need to crack open the plugin and uh, apply it to our project. So we can close the editor. And here in your project's uh, folder, if you don't have a folder that says plugins, you can just go ahead and create one. So create a new folder and call it plugins. Uh, exactly like this, plugins, this is where you're going to drop the plugin. 
So next we need to find that uh, compressed zip that we downloaded. And here I have the extracted files from the zip, the advanced sessions zip file for Unreal Engine 5.4. And if we open this up, you'll see two folders here, advanced sessions and advanced Steam sessions. These are the two folders that we need. So we can copy those and drop them into the plugins folder in our projects project files. And now one of the last things we need to do is head over to the Epic Games uh, Unreal Engine docs on the online subsystem for Steam. So head to this page here. And if we go down, you'll see here under end result finish settings, we've got this snippet for the default engine.ini. We can copy this whole snippet right here. So control C this snippet. And back in our project files, we actually want to go to config and open up the default engine.ini right here, default engine.ini. Scroll all the way to the bottom and paste this stuff in at the bottom, like so. And it's sort of indented all these. You don't you don't need these indentations. Uh, don't know why it's done that, but I'm just gonna get rid of these because it looks neater. And we can save this and close this. But just before we do, you'll notice this line here that says Steam Dev App ID equals 480. And 480 is the Steam App ID for testing. This is the test ID um, for running uh, on the Steam online subsystem before you've actually got your own Steam page and your own Steam app ID, we've got this one. So we can actually take this app ID here and copy it. And what we want to do is go back out and head into binaries and win 64. If you're running on Windows 64 bit, we're going to go to win 64. And we're going to create a new text document in here. And the text document needs to be called exactly steam underscore app ID like so steam underscore app ID and then open this up and we're going to put that 480 in here. So if you had your own steam app ID, you would obviously have it uh, correctly input in here and in the default engine INI, but for testing purposes, we can do this. So this is very, very important for later on when we package this project to test it uh, using the actual Steam online subsystem. This is very important indeed. So we can save this and close this. And now that that has all been done, we can open up the project once more. And we just want to make sure that that plugin has been activated. So we can go to edit and plugins. And right here at the top here under project, you should see advanced sessions plugin. And these two should both be activated right here. If they are not, you may have to activate them and then restart the editor. But these have been activated. And the last thing we need to do to check that this is actually working is fire up Steam in the background. So right now I am going to open up Steam. And I've logged into Steam on my other monitor. So right now we can start the Pi and see if this is working. But we do have to start this in standalone game to see if this is working. So hit standalone game on the Pi. And once this fires up, you should see a little pop up down the bottom right saying access the Steam community while playing. Press shift tab to begin. And you'll see that you can actually bring up the uh, full Steam overlay inside of your project, which I think is pretty cool. And that's it, guys. That is the first step towards creating our full Steam lobby system for our multiplayer game online. If this tutorial has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.